everybody, this is Mahmoud Abdul Khabir from Accredited Laboratory Channel. Today's lecture is about uncertainty types. In the previous lectures, we have explained what does it mean measurement uncertainty, which means how much you have a doubt with your analytical measurement. And there is a big difference between measurement uncertainty and the errors, where measurement uncertainty is a value added to the final results to compensate all effects coming from every step of measurement, but errors should be controlled and removed because it can bias the true value and that will be by repeating the analysis. And we said how to quantify measurement uncertainty. First, you have to identify all sources that can affect the final result and then you will estimate the size of uncertainty for each source and individual uncertainties should be combined together to get overall uncertainty. And how to estimate the size of uncertainty for each source? There are two ways, two types of evaluation, type A evaluation and type B evaluation, and these evaluations should be combined together to get overall uncertainty. Type A evaluation, by repeating the analysis from repeatability, by repeating the analysis different times. Replicate analysis, for spiked samples, 6 to 10 replicates, and then you will get more information about the variation between results. You will calculate standard deviation, then you will calculate your measurement uncertainty. Type B evaluation, all sources other than repeatability. These uncertainty from these two types of evaluation will be combined together to get overall uncertainty. Uncertainty types, we have a standard uncertainty, combined uncertainty and expanded uncertainty. Standard uncertainty, which is a standard deviation of the mean, all contributing uncertainties should be at the same confidence level, and that will be by converting them to standard uncertainty. In case of type A evaluation, standard uncertainty equal to standard deviation divided by square root of n, n which is number of replicates because only in this case you have repeatability so this standard deviation of the mean in case of type B evaluation, in which measurement uncertainty comes from all sources other than repeatability, like calibration certificates for balance, microbipeds, standard solutions, you don't know how they evaluate their measurement uncertainty. So, you cannot use the number that they add in the calibration certificate as it is. If they add plus minus 0 0.03, you cannot use it as it is. The spread of a set of values, standard deviation, can take different forms or probability distributions, like normal distribution or Gaussian. Other distributions also, which are famous also like rectangular and the triangular distribution. Normal distribution or Gaussian distribution, as we see in this graph, which characterizes the probability of random quantity y. Here is the mean, which has the highest probability of random quantity and as we move in both sides the probability will gradually decrease but it will never become zero that's why we cannot give measurement uncertainty at 100% confidence level in this case at one standard deviation k equal coverage factor which is coverage factor equal 1 Confidence level will be 68%. That means you will accept a lot of data, 68%. You are sure from your results, only 68%. So you, you will accept a lot of data which are away from the true value here. You will accept a lot of data that are away from the true value so this is not acceptable we cannot measure we cannot calculate 
measurement uncertainty at this confidence level, 68%. In case of two standard deviation, this is accepted because we will use confidence level 95%. At 95%, that means you are 95% sure from your results. Only 5% not sure, and this is acceptable. But at three standard deviation, you will be 99.7% sure from your results, and this is very restricted. Also, we cannot use very restricted. But it will never become 100% confidence level. We cannot give measurement uncertainty at 100% confidence level. So the lowest one we can use, which is between two standard deviation minus two standard deviation, which is which has coverage factor k equal two. So you can assume that uncertainty is coming with calibration certificates for like balance or microbipeds are normally distributed. Normally distributed and in this case you will calculate standard uncertainty which will be at high at confidence level 95% means coverage factor equal to it will be equal to uncertainty from the calibration certificate divided by 2. This will give you the standard uncertainty using this normal distribution. Other two Famous distributions are rectangular and the triangular distribution. In case of the rectangular distribution, as we see in this graph, if we take example like the pipette, and we have measurement uncertainty written on the pipette or in the certificate, which is equal to plus minus 0 0.03, but there is no information about the distribution function. You don't know what is the distribution used normally distributed or rectangular or whatever or coverage factor in this case what you can do you will assume that this is rectangular distribution and here you will find that will characterize the probability of volume calibrated volume of the bucket you will take as example 10 ml 10 ml here plus plus 10.03 ml minus 0.03 ml here in inside this range inside this range if you assume this is rectangular the probability of true calibrated volume true calibrated volume is equal within this range is equal within this range the probability of true calibrated volume is equal within this range and the probability of volume being outside this range is zero so in this case, what you, how you can calculate measurement uncertainty? You have to convert the uncertainty written in the certificate or on the pipette to standard uncertainty. Standard uncertainty, which is equal to, in this case, uncertainty from the certificate divided by square root of 3. So it will be equal to 0 0.03 divided by square root of 3 and you will use the standard uncertainty in your calculation for overall, overall uncertainties at the end which is combined uncertainty in case of triangular distribution as we see the same example using a pipette with plus minus 0 0.03 measurement uncertainty here in the graph you will find here the highest probability and inside this triangle the probability of being within this range the probability of being within this range is 100 percent outside this range the probability is zero if you assume that you will use triangular distribution that the uncertainty can using triangular distribution in this case you will calculate you will convert the uncertainty from the certificate for glass waves or for microwave bits or whatever you will to, to the standard uncertainty, standard uncertainty, and you will get standard uncertainty by dividing by dividing uncertainty from the certificate divided by square root of six to get standard uncertainty using triangular distribution. 
After that, individual standard uncertainty is calculated by type A evaluation or type B evaluation will be combined together to get combined uncertainty. Combined uncertainty, which is equal to the root sum of the squares of these uncertainties from type A evaluation and type B evaluation. At the end, we will calculate expanded uncertainty by multiplying, which is equal to uncertainty combined, combined uncertainty multiplied by 2. 2 which is coverage fa coverage factor at confidence level 95% why did we use 95% from this graph normal distribution normal distribution as we explained before normal distribution here each band has a width of one standard deviation here you will find one standard deviation two standard deviation three standard deviation Using one standard deviation, you will find k coverage factor equal to 1. In this case, confidence level 68%. So, you are 68% sure, sure that your results are in this range. In this range, which, which is the final result plus minus expanded uncertainty, final results expanded uncertainty, so in this range between the even minus or positive. In this range, your results are, 60, you are 68% sure that your results are in this range. So, you will accept a lot of data which are away from the true value, accept a lot of data, a lot of results away, which are away from the true value. Because you are only 68% sure from your results. So we want to state our overall uncertainty at another, another, another level of confidence here, in this case, at coverage factor 2. Confidence level will be equal to 95%. You are 95% that you sure that your results are in this range. But if you scale your measurement uncertainty at coverage factor equal 3, which is at confidence level 99.7%, in this case, that will be more restricted. After you will calculate the standard uncertainty for type A and type B evaluation, then you will combine all of them together to get combined uncertainty that will be the multiplied in two to get expanded uncertainty at confidence level 95% that will be your final result any results you will get inside the lab using this method for these compounds you will write final result plus minus expanded uncertainty at 95% this is expression of final results but you should know the compliance with the specification. You know your maximum residual limit. You will uh, add final results to uh, expanded uncertainty. And the results that you will get should be inside the limit. Inside the limit. Here is specified upper limit and this is lower limit. By addition of uncertainty, by addition of uncertainty to final results, you found that both of them inside the limit, so this result will be accepted. Both of them inside the limits. In this case, both of them, by addition of uncertainty to the, to the final results, both of them are outside the limit, so this result will be not fit or unaccepted. In this case, here, there is no firm conclusion about the uh, uncertainty. Result because overall answer because here you will find neither final result ni neither final results or nor uncertainty outside or inside the limit you don't know what to do in this case that you will lead to decision making as in decision maker as in ISO 17 or 25 2017 in this year you will let this decision for them you will just write your final result as example if your maximum residual limit is 20 ppb 
This is your maximum residual limit. And you get a result 15 BBB. Your uncertainty plus minus 40%. In this case, you will calculate measurement uncertainty from this result. It will be 6, 40% from 15 BB, the result that you will get, not from the maximum result limit. So it will be changed from result to another result. It will be 6 BBB. So you will write in the finals, in the final report, your results 15 BBB. Uncertainty plus minus 6 BBB. You have to convert your measurement uncertainty using the same unit as in ISO 2017 and uh, then you will find you will write maximum residual limit for acceptance which is 20 BBB so that will be for from the responsibility of decision makers 15 plus 6 will be 21 BBB 15 minus 6 will be 9 BBB so as they decide, they are responsible for the result according to the situation they have and we explain that in IO 17 or 25 2017 according to the information that I have about uncertainty I think I finished this course about uncertainty but if you have any other addition please be free to give me this information because I did these lectures to learn people and learn from everybody Thank you and see you in the next lecture with another subject, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.